Occasionally, a game will be released that turns the industry on its head. New technologies and engines can push the limitations of graphics and visuals. New business models can set an industry standard for new business practices. New mechanics can redefine the direction of an entire genre. And niche customers can be pleased with a wacky and creative new direction. Octodad is... well, not one of those games. Mainly because it's too early to tell. But it does belong to a popular genre that sort of came out of nowhere. There isn't really an official category for games like Octodad. People throw around adventure game way too much in my opinion. And while this game does share a few things in common with traditional adventure games, there's a pretty clear distinction between this and this. Ragdoll comes a little bit closer, but there's an insinuation in this term that suggests a complete lack of direct player control over the focal subject. Uh, plus, there are a ton of games that have Ragdoll that aren't exactly like the games I'm talking about. The term I prefer to use to describe games like this I'm pretty sure I heard over at the TOVG podcast. Octodad and games similar are floppy games. Floppy games include stuff like Goat Simulator, Surgeon Simulator, I Am Bread, that one Jurassic Park game, and uh, the granddaddy of the genre in its current state, Quop. Given the pivotal role of accurate player control required in this medium, why are these things cropping up? A cynic would probably tell you that the main purpose of creating and developing a floppy game is to appeal to YouTubers and enjoy some moderate or, in some cases, ridiculous profits. An optimist would say the objective is to provide a few hours of carefree, wacky hilarity for a reasonable price. But what would an academic say? Probably the former. But is there possibly a so-called floppy game that utilizes its story and gameplay to do something interesting and artistic? In my opinion, most of these games are empty, fleeting experiences of mindless humor. But not Octodad. But in order to discuss why, I need to explore a little bit more about these sloppy games. The defining characteristic of games like this seem to be the control scheme and the resulting avatar effect. It lies in the tenuous relationship between a player's inputs and the broad range of the game's interpretation of those inputs, which are generally based on exaggerated physics engines and intentionally unintuitive controls. Basically, they make simple things hard. Seasoned gamers will find mundane tasks made into exceedingly difficult multi-step processes. Walking upstairs, for example, would generally be handled by pressing a directional input towards stairs in other games. While in a floppy game, it becomes an entire ordeal, usually of a comedic nature. Octodad is no different. When walking, for example, players must control each leg individually. There's no pressing forward to go forward here, and as a result, the learning curve can be quite steep just to move around. Interacting with objects in the environment is equally frustrating. And the game's story and setting provide for several interesting locations and set pieces to explore this type of frustrating gameplay. The majority of the game focuses on menial and mundane places and activities, and by doing so, Octodad highlights how surprisingly intricate our everyday lives can be. Going shopping, putting on clothes, making coffee, all these things are mechanically intense rituals most everyone does on their average day. In addition to the mechanics of moving, there's a detection system in place. If a player knocks over a bunch of crap and causes a scene, there's a chance NPCs will realize Octodad as a character isn't your average guy. In fact, a lot of Octodad focuses on the average. Before you even get to the main menu, we see Octodad in a suit, his nuclear family at his side, and a backdrop of a white picket fence and clear blue sky. It harkens back to the idealized family of the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. Wife? Check. Son? Check. Daughter? Check. Their character designs echo the archetypical look of these stereotypical roles. They even seem to be named with these roles in mind. I mean, think about it. We got Scarlet, Tommy, and Susie. The level design cements this notion further, right down to the kitschy wallpaper and checkered floor tile in his kitchen. Everything seems perfect, but everything isn't perfect. Octodad as a character is hiding something, hiding something big. He may be a loving spouse and father, but he's also an octopus. 
And while this is a completely absurd premise, this fact alone makes Octodatas a game infinitely more respectable than other floppy games. By setting the story in an unrealistically idealized setting, Octodad evokes an uncomfortable subject. He faces these everyday situations with a secret handicap, and by playing this game, players have a chance to do so themselves. The zany physical comedy is juxtaposed by the constant threat of seeming abnormal. There's a very real anxiety felt by Octodad that he'll lose everything ideal if his handicap is recognized. And this anxiety is instilled in the player by way of the detection system. It's an exercise in empathy. Consider the situation of a spouse having relationship issues due to unspoken mental illness, or a parent unable to play with their child due to an unseen physical disability. The frustrations we feel as a player playing this completely ridiculous game are just a taste of what some people deal with every day in the real world. It's pretty clear from the tone of the game, Octodad is meant to be a whimsical, humorous experience, but the gameplay and the story portray the sobering reality of living with a disability. Even if you won't grant me that, the story is very explicitly about being secretly different. The complete lack of cynicism in the tone conflicts harshly with the mechanics of the gameplay, resulting in stressful but also heartbreaking schisms. The external world goes about its business while Octodad as a character is tried and pushed in ways impossible to appreciate as a normal person. But given all that, in the end, when the truth comes out, his family still accepts him. And that made this surprisingly deep experience more meaningful than all the cheap laughs in the world.